Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on Dentistry and more. So let's start our general indices series. So in this video, I will be explaining about the basic definition, classification, ideal requisites, and the oral debris index that is OHI and OHIS that is oral hygiene indices. So in the next videos, I will be covering more periodontal indices, uh, caries indices, and fluorosis index. So let's see what is an index. Okay, an index is nothing but numbers which are used to find out the incidence, prevalence, and severity of disease based on which preventive programs can be adopted. Or we can say that it is not a definition. We can say that uh, we can express the clinical observation in numerical value. So the most common definition is given by Russell A. L. It is a numerical value describing the relative status of a population on a graduated scale with definite upper and lower limit which is designed to permit and facilitate comparison with other population classified by the same criterion methods. So it is nothing but a number which is describing the status of a population. So what is the status, what is the oral health, what is the KD status, what is the plaque status, what is the gingival status. With a graduated scale just like a scale with graduation proper markings in between with a definite upper and lower limit there will be a definite upper limit and lower limit if it is OHIS the upper limit is 6 lower limit is 0 and why we are using this facilitate comparison with other population so other population which is classified by the same index we can compare it so comparison between the groups is what index is made for So that is the definition we uh, need to by heart. So let's see what are the requisites, ideal requisites of an index. To be very clear, the criteria should be very simple and it should be objective. Objective means uh, we have subject and object. The patient is a subject and objective the examiner. So the rules and criteria can only be decided by the or should be decided by the object. So if suppose a patient says or the uh, patient has a different opinion about what you uh, finding in his mouth you can't trust on the patient's words or patient's judgment the investigator or the researcher person has to be the final word and it should be acceptable the index should be acceptable by the patient and there should be sensitivity sensitivity means it should be able to detect the very small change in both the direction if it is very bigger or if it is very low if it has to be uh, detect the minute changes then quantifiability the index should be uh, expressed in numbers and only we can do statistical analysis so it should be a number anyway it is a number because the definition itself says it is a number so index should be always in a quantity so no quality can be measured or compared uh, each, between each groups or between different groups so it is always should be quantifiable and reliability we have different types of reliability that is inter-examiner reliability or intra-examiner reliability so it can be uh, calculated using kappa statistics so it should be um, more than 0.8 or 80 percentage in uh, all the researchers so there should be training and calibration should be done before the actual examination validity means it should measure what it intends to measure so validity we have phase validity content validity and construct validity so if it is a questionnaire based uh, index we should may, may, we should always check the phase validity content validity and construct validity before we are playing it so these are the ideal requisites of an index that is clarity simplicity objectivity validity reliability quantifiability sensitivity and acceptability so it has many uses if it can be uh, used for individual patients in research in community community can detect the prevalence and in research we need to you know, do a proper uh, examination to find out baseline data and in, for individual patient we can uh, check the patients before after oral hygiene status or not, something like that 
so to motivate the patient after the proper instructions we, we can compare with uh, indices and um, produce the result and make him convinced that uh, the patient has improved so what are the classifications so classification is based on the scores fluctuation that is irreversible and reversible irreversible indices are oral hygiene indices plaque indices gingival indices so the scores can be fluctuated if patient has very poor oral hygiene mm, the patient score will be very bad but if he is properly cleaning if properly maintaining the scores will reduce again it will go back to the older scenario that is reversible index irreversible index means dental caries such conditions or periodontal pocket which cannot be reversed depending upon the extent full mouth indices are teens fluorosis index um, russell's periodontal indices or hi indices simplified are the shorter versions or his that is a simplified indices whereas ohi is a full mouth indices the next classification is disease index based on the entity disease symptom and treatment <coughs> this is dmft the d portion is disease index symptom index is nothing but a gingival index the presence or absence gingival index or plaque uh, or the bleeding indices treatment index means the t portion of the dmft simple and cumulative index simple index means a gingival index Cumulative index means which records the past condition also that is DMFT index where the past experience caries experience is recorded. So criteria are it should be simple it should uh, permit examination for many people and require minimum armamentarium and expenditure it should be highly reproducible it should not cause any discomfort it should be amenable to statistical analysis and there should be a strongly numerically to clinical stages uh, re relation should be there okay so let's see what is the oral hygiene index so first we are seeing oral hygiene index given by john c green and jacka vermilion in 1960 it is to measure the oral hygiene status of a patient so we divide the total mouth into six category six segments that is uh, we call it as segment or sextant because it is one out of six because we have six segment so we can call it as segment also so this is the first segment which is starts from the third molar on the right side up to premolar the second segment is canine to canine here it is premolar to third molar similarly on the lower arch so we have total six arch so what are the rules of oral hygiene index the first one is only fully erupted permanent teeth will be recorded third molars are not commonly recorded the buccal and lingual scores both are taken on a single tooth so one segment so we will be taking all the buccal scores of here from 14 to 18 and whichever tooth is having highest buccal score we will mention that similarly all the lingual score so only one score per segment will be there so here also all the buccal score will be checked and which tooth is having highest so that score will be uh, mentioned again lingual score so one segment having one buccal score and one lingual score so what are the debris criteria so debris is very simple if it is zero means no debris one is one third of the exposed to surface two means it is more than one third but not more than two third three means it is more than two third that is debris score Calculus score also same. Supra and subgingival calculus is there. Zero means no calculus. One is supragingival calculus. One third. Two is supragingival calculus. More than one third, less than two third. But there is addition. If there is, it is not and, it is or. Either one has to be there for giving score to individual flex okay the score two is for individual flex of subgingival calculus or supragingival calculus covering more than one third and less than two third either this or either this score three is more than two third supra and there should be a continuous band this is a band this is individual flex okay so for giving three either one should be there either subgingival continuous band or 
more than two third of calculus so this is how we calculate it has two component what is one is debris index one is calculate index so we have buckle score plus cylindrical score divided by number of segments that is always the denominator will be six so we need to calculate the six segments buckle score and lingual score divided by six again six segments buckle and lingual score of calculus divided by six so finally OHI is equal to ta plus ci so usually debris index and calculus index ranges from zero to six because the maximum score in one segment can be three so let me explain you one segment maximum we get three because out of all these scores the maximum score can be three so all six segments the maximum score will be 18 okay so three 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 similar ling lingual score so 18 plus 18 36 and denominator is six so maximum score can be six and if there is no calculus or no debris it will be it will be zero both buckle and lingual if it is zero means zero by six zero six means Maximum score 3, all the segments buckle score 6 into 318, lingual score 6 into 318, so 18 plus 18, 36, 36 by 6, 6. So OHA is addition of DA and CA, so this can be 0 plus 6 plus 0 plus 6, so this is the formula, so we get 0 to 6 plus 0 to 6, that is 0 to 12, so this is OHA, not OHIS. So maximum score for all segment can be 36 for debris or calculus just i mentioned 18 plus 18 so higher the ohi poorer is the oral hygiene patient so in ohi we don't have any special category for uh, based on the score so let's see what is ohis or simplified oral hygiene index the scores are same 0 1 2 3 is same for ohi and ohis but few modifications or changes are here it is developed in 1964 by the same authors, John C. Green and Chaka Vermilion, and only fully erupted permanent teeth are scored. But here, instead of checking all the teeth, only one teeth per segment is selected. It is known as index tooth. And natural teeth with full crown restoration and surfaces reduced to height will not be considered. So we have index teeth for all the six segments. So the first segment is 1611263631 and 46. So all the molars, first molars and central incisor and lower central incisor. So suppose 16 is missing, we can take 17 or 18 because it has a similar surface area. 16 and 15 is a different surface area, so we don't take it. So 11 and 21, same surface area, not 12. Similarly, 262738, replacement of second and third molar. This is right or left central incisor. So here we are checking only six teeth. Okay, there we are checking all the teeth, both buccal and both lingual. And we will be taking only one score of or one segment. That is, we check all the teeth, we take only one score out of it. And here also the difference is for lower 3, 6 and 4, 6. That is we take lingual surface and both all the rest of the teeth we take buccal or labial surface so only six surface we are checking only three six and four six uh, are lingual surfaces and other teeth are buccal surfaces why because there is a saliva pulling in all these areas here submandibular sub sublingual gland here parotid glands so it naturally it is all clean areas but if it is not clean we need to know we can assume that patient's oral hygiene is not proper so uh, assessing that patient's oral hygiene we check the these teeth because if it is natural cleaning cleansed area is not not even clean it reflects the patient's attitude so this is how we calculate same way or gis one simplified question is added up here same formula or is equal to das plus cas TAS or CA is total score by number of surfaces. Here it will be maximum score of 6, six into 3 that is 18 by 6. So we get only 0 to 3. Minimum score is 0, maximum score is 3. Because total score is either buccal or lingual. Total we have 6 surfaces. So maximum 6 into 3. So that is 18. 18 by Number of surfaces a six, so eighteen by six six is equal to three. 
so 0 to 3 is the maximum score and OHO is both debris and calculus will come so 0 to 3 plus 0 to 3 that is 6 so 0 to 6 will be OHIS and 0 to 3 will be debris index or calculus index because it has only buckle score or lingual score not buckle and lingual okay so 6 teeth has only one measurement there we have both buckle and lingual here only one measurement for 4 teeth it is buckle and 2 teeth is lingual that is 3 6 and 4 6 are lingual rest all buckle so OHI and OHI uh, DA and CAS as three category good, fair and poor. It is good means 0 to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 to 1.8 is fair, poor is 1.9 to 3. OHI is good means 0 to 1.2, this is 1.3 to 3, 3 to 6. No, this is not exactly the double of this. There is a change here. So this type of uh, category is not there in OHI. This is only for OHI. This is a simplified version. This is very easy to apply in patients or a large group of people. Uh, so OHIS can be uh, used to conduct oral hygiene surveys because it is very easy compared to OHI. Because uh, it has taking only six surfaces, not entire teeth. So there actually in OHIS we are taking, if it is 32, we are taking entire 32 buckle surface and entire 32 lingual surface so total 64 surface we need to check but only six uh, six scores will be there because only one tooth uh, per segment but both lingual and buckle score but here we are not checking entire teeth only six teeth are checking instead of 64 surfaces and also here there is no buckle lingual on the same tooth on either buckle or lingual so only six surfaces we are checking in OHI we are checking actually 64 surfaces so 64 surfaces and 6 surfaces have huge difference and they have a clear indication of why we are checking these surfaces I told you regarding the uh, saliva pooling and patients hygiene patients attitude so that's all about OHI and OHIS it is very important in our practical sessions and for the university practical exam this is the compulsory uh, index all students must follow so i'll come up with uh, dmft and dmfs uh, in my next session and then uh, cpi indices cpitn and russell index and finally fluorosis index so hello everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more so let's continue our uh, indices session so today's session is about patient hygiene performance index or php index which is introduced by port shadley ag and halley jv in 1968 so this is similarly as oral hygiene index simplified version so this is also having the same index as teeth 1611263631 and 46 and the same surface all buckle are, uh, or labial only 36 and 46 are having lingual it is same as OHI is simplified so this is also having six index teeth so this is nothing but a plaque and debris index so we will be checking plaque and debris whereas in OHI yes, we were checking debris and calculus but here instead of calculus we will be checking plaque so debris and plaque is always different debris is loosely arranged uh, collection of uh, food particles mucins or bacteria but plaque is a very tenacious adherent on hard surfaces so it is not visible only debris is visible for plaque to be visible we need to apply disclosing solution so these are the six index teeth and these are the surfaces so after that uh, we need to see the other properties that is a procedure first we need to apply a disclosing solution to make the plaque visible so patient will be asked to switch for 30 seconds of any of the plaque uh, disclosing agent and then expectorate but not rinse so examination is made by using a mouth mirror the change is we are dividing the tooth surface into five that is mesial one third distal one third 
and the middle one third will be again divided into three gingival middle and occlusal or incisor so total five surfaces will be there that is five subdivisions so the uh, options are either zero or one zero there is no debris or questionable one is debris present so debris score for individual tooth will be calculated by add all the scores and divide by five because five divisions are there so here it is one 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 so four scores are there so debris score for that tooth is four by five because five subdivisions becomes 0.8 so php index for an individual so we need to add up all the scores then divided by the number of teeth so how many teeth were examined that we have to keep it in denominator so finally we get a score excellent zero good 0.1 to 1.7 fair 1 1.8 to 3.4 poor 3.5 to 5 so this is like OHIS index, so OHIS index is also we have good fair poor score. The score is little different but in OHIS we were checking debris index and calculus index but here we are checking black index, uh, black score and debris score. So next we will move on to black index. So black index it was given by Silness and Lowe in 1964 which actually um, check the thickness of plaque at the cervical margin of tooth. Cervical margin it will be checking because plaque will be mostly concentrated on the cervical region. So the distal, mesial, lingual and buccal. So these four surfaces, the cervical region will be checked for the plaque score. The scoring criteria is as follows 0, 1, 2, 3. There is no plaque. One is a film of plaque which is adhering to free gingival margin and adjacent area of tooth. The plaque may be seen in, in situ only after application of disclosing solution. The two is moderate accumulation within the gingival pocket, tooth and gingival margin which can be seen with the naked eye. The one is only after application of disclosing solution. And three is abundance of soft matter within the gingival pocket and or on the tooth and gingival margin the two and three we can see with naked eyes but one we need to apply this closing solution so calculation we have on zero to three um, score for each surface so individual tooth goes added then divided by uh, four because we have four surface mesial distal facial and lingual so for black index for group of teeth or for individual we need to add up all the scores then divided by the number of teeth examined then black index for a group all indices are taken and divided by the number of individuals okay so interpretation is excellent score 0 good 0 0.0 to 0.1 to 0.9 where is 1 to 1.9 what is 2 to 3 Uses which is very reliable technique for evaluating both mechanical anti plaque procedures and chemical agents. Also, can be used in longitudinal studies and clinical trials. Now, we have another plaque index which is known as Kuglin Hain plaque index. Later, it was modified by Tureski Gilmore Glickman. So, the original index Kuglin in 1962. They reported a plaque measurement that focused on the gingival tooth. So mostly, uh, majority of the plaque indices will be focusing on the gingival third of the tooth. Only the facial surface of anterior teeth were examined using basic fits in uh, mouthwash as a disclosing agent. But in 1917, it was modified by Tureski, Gilmore and Glickman. So, in this modification, the change was instead of anterior teeth they were checking all the teeth and not just on the facial surface they were checking other surfaces like uh, labial um, uh, other surfaces such as lingual uh, labial and buccal surface because a posterior teeth also were involved 
but in the Kugelian it was only anterior surface the facial surface of anterior teeth were examined but later modified into all the teeth with lingual and labial surfaces so that was modification done by 1970 so these were the scoring criteria 0 1 2 3 4 5 0 is no plaque, 1 is separate flex of plaque at the cervical margin, 2 is thin continuous band up to 1 mm, 3 is band of plaque wider than 1 mm but covering less than 1 third of crown, 4 is plaque covering at least 1 third but less than 2 third, and 5 is plaque covering more than 2 third of the crown. And the index is based on the numerical score is 0 to 5. So we can calculate uh, the individual tooth score how we did in last. And uh, we can calculate the patient uh, total performance or total score by dividing, then keeping uh, denominator total teeth examined. So we get a score. Okay. So now we have a few uh, gingival indices. The periodontal index and CPITN we already covered in our uh, earlier sessions now let's see what is gingival index it was developed by low and silness in 1963 the same authors of gingival index but gingival uh, sorry plaque index the plaque index was by silness and low gingival index low and silness same authors but one is having more contribution so he kept as a first author so it is one of the most widely accepted used gingival indices it has a severity of gingivitis at four possible areas mesial, lingual, distal, and facial. So, only qualitative changes are assessed. Method is all surfaces of all teeth or selected teeth can be checked. So, selected teeth can be 1, 6, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 3, 2, and 3, 4. Here, the change in index teeth is lateral incisor and second premolar, like OHIS or PHP index. So the teeth and gingiva are first dried with a blast of air or cotton rolls. The tissues are divided into four gingival scoring units. Distofacial papillae, facial margin, mesiofacial papillae and entire lingual margin. A blunt probe will be used to assess the bleeding potential of the tissue. So this is the score 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 is no inflammation, normal gingiva. One is mild inflammation, slight change in color light edema no bleeding on probing two is moderate inflammation moderate glazing redness edema and bleeding on probing three severe inflammation and marked redness hypertrophy and spontaneous bleeding two is bleeding on probing this is spontaneous bleeding so calculation and interpretation if the scores around each tooth are totaled and divided by number of surfaces per tooth examined that is 4, the gingival index score of the tooth is obtained. So just like how we did in our previous index and totaling all score per tooth and dividing by number of teeth examined gives the score for individual. So this scenario is same for all index total score divided by number of segments or number of surfaces or number of sections per tooth and we add up all the scores divided by number of teeth will give the individual score interpretation 0.121 mild gingivitis 1.12 moderate 2.123 severe gingivitis in modified gingival index it was developed by Lobin with the fourth row slam and manaker in 1986 which assess the prevalence and severity of gingivitis which is strictly based on non-invasive approach that is visual examination only without any probing so that is the difference there is no probing to obtain modified gingival index label and lingual surface of gingival margin and the interdental papilla of all erupted teeth except third molars are examined and scored so this is score 0 1 2 3 4 one is mild inflammation, two is mild inflammation, entire gingival unit. This is little change in the texture and only any portion of the gingival unit is affected. There's three is moderate inflammation, 
and uh, there will be redness, edema and hypertrophy for a severe inflammation and spontaneous bleeding. This is all clinical examination, no is no invasive technique. The next index is papillary marginal attachment index or PMA. It was given by Maury Messler and Shore in 1944. It is based on the number of gingival units affected were counted rather than the severity of inflammation. So what uh, we are doing is gingival unit is divided into three compartments that is papillary gingiva, marginal gingiva and attached gingiva. The presence or absence of inflammation on each gingival unit is recorded usually only on maxillary and mandibular incisors canines and premolars so after that uh, we need to uh, score based on this criteria that is papillary and marginal component as scores 0 to 5 papillary is 0 normal mild papillary enlargement obvious increase in size excessive increase in size necrotic papilla and atrophy and loss of papilla for 5 whereas marginal component 0 normal 1 is engorgement no bleeding 2 is bleeding on pressure 3 is swollen collar beginning infiltration 4 is necrotic gingiva and 5 is recession of free marginal gingiva below CJ due to the inflammatory changes Whereas the A component that is PMA A component attached component we have only O score that is 0, 1, 2, 3. Here we have six scores actually, only five uh, uh, scores 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 will not be counted anyway. So total six scores here we have four scores 0, 1, 2, 3. 0 is normal, 1 is slight engorgement with loss of stippling. 2 is obvious encroachment with marked increase in redness and pocket formation and 3 is advanced periodontitis. To calculation will add up all the 3 P plus N plus A will get the final scores. It is used in clinical trials, individual patients and surveys. Now we have bleeding index given by INAMO and in 1975 gingival bleeding index which is based on recording from all four tooth surface of teeth recorded as bleeding present plus and bleeding absent negative so these four surfaces are buccal lingual mesial and distal so a negative or minus sign is equivalent to zero and one plus sign is equivalent to two and three the gingival bleeding index is calculated as a percentage of affected sites so in experimental studies and Ladies and individual patients also it can be used. We have sulcus splitting index, which is developed by Mulliman, Etcher, and Sanas in 1971. It is a modification of papillary marginal index of Mulliman and Mazer Z. So scoring criteria is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 0 is healthy looking papillary and marginal gingiva. No bleeding on probing. 1 is healthy looking gingiva, bleeding on probing. 2 is bleeding on probing, change in color but no edema. 3 is slight edema. 4 is same symptoms with obvious edema. 5 is marked edema so four gingival units are scored systematically for each tooth the labial lingual the mesial and distal gingival scores of these units are added by divided by four gives sulcus bleeding index but modified circular bleeding index developed by uh, mobley van Osten and church at all in 1987 here we have 0, 1, 2, 3 scores. 0, no bleeding when probe is passed along the gingival margin. 1 is isolated bleeding, spots visible. 2 is blood forms a confluent red line on margins. 3 is heavy or profuse bleeding. So that was about bleeding index and gingival index. So I'll come up with a new session in dentistry and more. Thank you. Hello everyone. 
Welcome back to the dental indices session on dentistry and more. So today we have uh, dental caries indices. So we will be seeing only DMFT and uh, DMFS. So that is what uh, important for us in our uh, practical session or even for our exam. So it was given by Henry T. Clean, Carole Palmer and Nutson JW in 1938. It is decade missing filled teeth index or dm of t index so it is very simple rapid and versatile and very universally accepted one it is very easy to calculate there's no much con confusion in it and it is an irreversible index we have seen in classification of index so the tooth the idea is it is uh, measuring the caries experience so caries experience is a term they used caries experience so the filling due to caries and the missing due to caries is what this index measuring okay so we have three category that is decayed missing and filled so missing due to caries and filling due to caries so what are the instruments and uh, conditions there should be a proper lighting and a three plane mirror that is our common mirror and a explorer that is a common explorer so these are the instruments or instrument and uh, lighting setup and third molars are not included all 28 teeth are examined <laughs> so teeth which are excluded so this is one of the pioneer uh, setup in dental caries assessment uh, this system so this is nowadays is modified by who uh, but this is the true index and true uh, and in its uh, raw version or original version we are studying so later we have modifications in 1986 and 1997 by WHO so let's see the original version where the third molars and uninterrupted teeth are not included continuously missing and supernumerary teeth teeth removed reason other than dental caries so all these uh, in modification of 86 third molars are included and uh, teeth lost due to periodontal disease for aged 30 are included uh, in 97 modification so in original version teeth removed other than caries so they use the term caries experience so other than caries reasons are not considered and teeth restored the reasons other than dental caries <coughs> are also not included in filling criteria such as we do filling for abrasion, uh, trauma, uh, and uh, gingival recession. So all these things are not included. Primary tooth retained with permanent successor erected also not included. So what are the basic principles and rules? So only one tooth counted once. No tooth must be counted more than once, either decayed, missing, or filled. So if a filling and a decay is present on the same tooth it will be always decay filling will not be counted in DMFT and decayed missing and filled teeth should be recorded separately since the component of DMF are of great interest so D M and F are separate entity when counting the number of decay teeth also include those teeth which have restorations with recurrent decay so I told you like if a tooth with restoration and decay <laughs> filling is not considered only decay so care must be taken to list as missing only those teeth which have been lost due to decay so missing due to periodontal reason missing for orthodontic extraction missing due to trauma accident are not considered here and also we can include which are indicated for extraction under missing category so that is another criteria so we can include such tooth also for missing teeth following should not be counted as missing uninterrupted missing due to accident continuously missing teeth have been extracted for orthodontic reason tooth may have several illustration but is counted at one deciduous teeth are not included under capital dmf count it has small dmf 
A tooth is considered only when the occlusal surface or incisal edge is totally exposed or can be exposed by gentle probing. So what are the modifications? Modification 9086 modification, like I told you, all third molars are included. Temporary restorations are considered as decayed, whereas original version it was a filling. And only caries cavities are considered D. The initial lesions, that is like chalky spots, Spain fissures are not considered as D. Whereas in original version, a catch, a slight uh, discoloration and slight uh, the demineralization area would be considered as caries. But those are excluded from caries category in this modification of 1986. <coughs> So we put, uh, so calculation, how do we calculate? So calculate, we have many like uh, individual DMFT, just add up DMF, we get DMF, group average, total DMF by total number of subjects, person needing care, total decayed by total number examined, percent of tooth lost, like number of missing by total number, fill tooth, uh, total fill by total DMFT, and missing, uh, teeth percentage that is total missing by total number so we can have many uh, categories of uh, expression of data so the maximum possible is 28 if the raw version and 32 if the WHO modified version so in 1997 uh, the WHO modified a little more uh, elaborate that is uh, the explorer is used in the raw version but in 1997 WHO recommended CPI probe and also one more addition is that tooth loss due to periodontal reason that is other than caries for the people more than 30 would also be considered as missing. So if a tooth uh, loss due to uh, periodontal reason for a 35 age old it will be considered as missing the modification 1997 but it's not considered as a row. Or the original version so this is uh, 1986 that WHO oral health performer third edition modification and the 1997 modification is also there that is a fourth edition so what are the advantages uh, because of its widespread used it's been used for almost 60 years and it gives reasonable accurate uh, historical count account of changes in prevalence of dental caries but the limitation we already discussed does not values are not related to the number of teeth at risk dmf tinders can be invalid in all adults because teeth can become lost due to other reasons than caries dmft index uh, can be misleading in children whose teeth have been lost due to orthodontic reason and dmft index can overestimate because of the preventive feelings such as spit and fissure sealants DMFT index is of little use in studies of root caries. So, next is DMFS. So, here it is. Surface is also included instead of tooth. That is, same authors given by and pretty clean Caroli Palmer and Hudson W. Same, same authors in the same year, 1938. Which is more sensitive it is it has an option to uh, enter multiple category in the single tooth you can have both caries and filling on the same tooth that is the advantage so usually the index of cho choice in a clinical trial of caries preventive agent used to determine total caries experience past and present so it has five surfaces buccal lingual mesial distal and occlusal and anterior it has no occlusal only mesial buccal distal and tingle so this is like decayed surface missing surface and filled surface so anterior it has four surface that is buccal lingual mesial distal and uh, on the posterior it has occlusal for the premolars and molars so dmfs is more detailed index than dmft by summing the total number of decayed missing and filled two surfaces so as in case of DMFT index, DMFS index is simple and versatile and more sensitive. It is giving more detailed uh, output. 
so how we are checking dmfs index like i told you for posterior teeth five surfaces like facial mesial distal lingual and occlusal anterior there is no occlusion so calculation is individual just like dmft we can calculate dsmsfs so how many surfaces will be there so in dmft there will be maximum 28 or 32 but in dmfs if it is 28 there will be 128 surfaces like how 16 into 5 it becomes 80 that is 16 molars and premolars 2 molars and 2 premolars on one quadrant so total 14 teeth each has 5 surfaces so 80 and 3 teeth that is central lateral and canine on one quadrant 4 into 3 12 into 4 48 so 80 plus 48 128 so if 32 means again 20 will be added up for the 4 molars that will become 148 surfaces so 0 to 28 or 0 to 32 is a dmft scores and 0 to 128 and 0 to 148 is the score of dmfs so modifications like uh, we have uh, modifications of crown teeth bridge pontics and any other particular required for study we can modify it so dmfs uh, can be used in half mouth and uh, such way for time uh, management there are many disadvantage because uh, sometimes we use like I uh, mentioned half mouth and opposite quadrant that is uh, producing inconsistent uh, diagnosis tooth score exactly the same under extreme of clinical condition and provides little or no additional information in prevalence studies so the advantage is more sensitive because the same tooth can be mentioned uh, if it has both caries and uh, filling missing anyway there won't any chance of uh, multiple entry so the color we commonly used black for caries uh, blue for filling and uh, red for missing so caries indices for primary tendition this is what i was mentioning def index given by grebel in 1944 this is just another version of tmft so DEF in DFT index or DEFS index equal to DMFT or DMFS. D for decayed, E for extracted, F for filled. So the basic principles and rules of DEFS index are the same as capital letter or the uppercase DMFS or DMFT index. D means indicate the number of deciduous teeth that are decayed in counting the number of decayed deciduous teeth only counted once. Just like our capital DMFT cannot be counted as filled and decayed if it is restored and caries can be detected it is decayed because caries has more weightage the explorer should fall into the caries with substance and not just to the deep groove before counting occlusal caries and this is a, a tricky part E for extraction indicate those deciduous teeth which have been extracted due to caries or which are so badly decade that are indicated for extraction because of the wide variation in the time of exfoliation teeth we cannot put m category we are putting e category it is difficult to determine whether tooth is missing from the deciduous rendition was normal exfoliated or was extracted because of caries so if cat if it can be accurately established that a missing deciduous teeth has been lost due to loss due to caries include it without indicated for extraction with those indicated for extraction sorry so f is nothing but indicated for filling or filling has been done so modification of def is def index is dmf for use in children before the age of exfoliation that is children over seven years and up to 11 or 12 years so in this group we can use dmf because uh, by the time uh, all the teeth uh, must have erupted and it will be in the mixed dentition time and exfoliation will be done by 12 years so we can use dmf missing due to caries df means in this in this index the missing teeth are ignored we because of this controversy the m category is removed and we say dft or dfs index
Disadvantage is it is difficult to determine whether the primary tooth has been extracted or shed naturally. That is the most disadvantage. So that is all about uh, the dental caries index. Uh, there are many indices, uh, sick index, um, ICDS criteria, many indices are therefore assessing uh, dental caries. So this is uh, the pioneer pioneers of classification of dental caries. Help. So periodontal indices will be checking results indice, um, then uh, CPITN, CPI index. So these three are the periodontal index we'll be covering. There are lots and lots of indices uh, in periodontal health, oral hygiene, dental caries. There's lots of health indices are there, but we are checking only specifically needed for our exam purpose. So let's see what is results periodontal index. This is one of the first index which has uh, come to assess the periodontal health which was uh, put forward by Russell in 1956 is the same person who has uh, defined a dental index so this index is all teeth are examined this is a full mouth index and he has given scores such as 0 1 2 4 6 8 in order to relate the stages of disease so this represents the stages of disease zero is very healthy eight is very worse in periodontal status so results rule is if you have a doubt always give lesser score so if you have a doubt one and two you are getting confused whether it is one and two give one if it is zero and one give zero if it is six and eight you're getting confused give six that is the results rule when in doubt assign the lesser score so let's see the criteria and radiographics findings so we use a uh, normal periodontal probe if there is no inflammation in the investing tissue and uh, no loss of function due to destruction we give zero if there's no change in radiograph if it is mild gingivitis that is overt inflammation in the free gingiva that is one Proper gingivitis with inflammation completely circumscribe the tooth. We give score 2. But there is no break in epithelial attachment. So till 0, 1, 2 there is no radiographic finding. But 4 only radiographic findings. There is no clinical finding. There is early notch like resorption of the alveolar crest. So we give score 4. 6. Both uh, clinical and radiographic findings are there. Here is gingivitis with pocket formation. So that is the addition in 6. The epithelial attachment is broken and there is a pocket. There is no interference with normal masticatory function. So that is important. Even if it is slightly mobile and the normal mastication is happening, we should give 6. And to this firm its socket and not a drifted. There is only horizontal bone loss involving the entire alveolar crest up to half of the length. But 8 is advanced destruction with loss of masticatory function. The tooth may be loose, may have drifted, may sound dull on percussion with metallic instrument or may be depressible. That means there is apical infection or apical lesion. That is why it is slightly mm, depressible in its socket and sound dull percussion on metallic instruments. So there is advanced bone loss involving more than half of the tooth root, definite intra bony pocket. With widening of PDL and there may be root resorption. So why he has given 0, 1, 2? After that, there is no 3, there is no 5 and there is no 7. It is why? Because he has to avoid confusion. So that is why he has given the rule also. When in doubt, assign less score. So if it is kept 3, there will be a lot of confusion. Again, 5, 7, lot of confusion. So to avoid confusion, and to give very concrete criteria, he has skipped 3, 5 and 7. So how we calculate, it's nothing, it's very easy. We need to add up all the scores. So scores will be individual. So all the teeth um, will be getting uh, 1, 1 score based on this criteria. Then add up all the teeth scores and divided by number of teeth. So this is the interpretation just like OHIS. 0 to 0 0.2 it is normal supportive tissue 0.3 to 0.9 simple gingivitis 1 to 1.9 beginning of the destructive periodontal disease 2 to 4.9 established and 5 to 8 is terminal disease 
and always this is very uh, over represented or exaggerated result we can use only in field condition individual uh, patients this score always will be exaggerated so it is not uh, very commonly used in clinical condition so the next index is cpit and index after that uh, people started using this index in 1982 this is known as community perirondal index for treatment it's introduced by chuka inamo in who and fda joint working committee in 1982 so it is primarily to survey and evaluate perirondal treatment needs rather than the past and present perirondal status so it is based to on the treatment needs so what is the condition or what could be done on the patient rather than the results which is giving past and pres present periodontal status like recession and loss of alveolar bone so treatment needs implies that cpatn assesses only those conditions potentially responsive to treatment but not non treatable or irreversible condition so here the procedure it's not like full mouth index it is like ohs dividing the tooth uh, mouth into six sextants so i told you segment sextant if it is one of six it is gonna known as uh, sextant okay so one two three four five six just like our ohs canine to canine canine to canine premolar to molar on the right and left side and upper and lower so one seven two one four one three two two three two four two so three two seven on lower and upper third molars are not included except whether they are functioning in place of second molar okay so it is commonly used for more than 20 years less than 20 years it is not used so we take uh, the index teeth like 1716 and 112627474631 just like mm, our our chase indices teeth all the molars are there 1626 Three six and four six and replacement is one seven or two seven and one one and three one. The index is the same. So here we are using CPITN probe. So this probe has discuss uh, described by WHO. It has two purposes. One is measurement of pockets and the detection of subgenital calculus. Okay, its weight is five grams and working force should be twenty to twenty five grams or. 0.75 newton so it has two types one is e probe and one is clinical and this is epidemiological probe so it has 0.5 mm tip ball and there is a black band between 3.5 to 5.5 but in clinical probe which needs more uh, investigation because this is field condition we won't be checking very detail about a uh, patient we just check whether pocket is present or not if gingival margin is coming within the black band that is pocket because the gingival sulcus it will be more than 3.5 mm if it has to come between the black uh, between this black band so if the margin is coming here we don't need to check it is a pocket but here we are checking exactly how what is the depth of pocket so clinical we have more uh, detailing that is 8.5 to 11.5 mm again rings are there this is not band there are two rings the lower ring and upper ring it is for more detailed study so clinical side we use this detailed one and epidemiological surveys we use this probe so scoring criteria and treatment needs are there zero means healthy periodontium one is bleeding two is calculus three is pocket that is gingival margin is between the black band so gingival margin will be here for three one is uh, bleeding and two is calculus okay so four is pocket 6 mm or more black band will not be visible so gingival margin will be here so black band will not be visible it will be completely immersed in the gingival pocket X is when X when only one tooth or no teeth are present in the sextant. Okay, so X we we need to give for sextant where is no tooth. Suppose if sextant is no tooth or only one tooth remaining, we are removing or we will not check that particular sextant. So treatment need based on the codes. If it is zero, there is no treatment. One, there is self care. Two, there is professional scaling. 
three means scaling and root planning and four is complex therapy so that is about cpit and prop its codes its treatment needs types of cpi probes and its uh, procedure and its um, extents and little bit about its history so we covered results index cpit and index and next will be cpi index okay next we have a communal periodontal index that is cpi index which is a modification of cpit and index actually the modification is we included a loss of attachment segment and remove the treatment needs category and cpi scoring criteria is same as cpit and done with cpit and c pro so both the criteria and the instruments are same but the thing is the true sign of periodontitis is loss of attachment in russell's periodontal index and cpit and index they fail to mention about the true periodontal sign that is loss of attachment so who in 1994 introduced a new index that is community periodontal index or cpi index which actually measures the loss of attachment which is a true sign of periodontitis so this is the same uh, code for cpit and zero there is no uh, problem one is bleeding two is calculus three the pocket is four uh, to five mm that is gingival margin is within the black band four is uh, black band is not visible uh, a pocket of more than six mm and x is excluded sextant and n is not recorded so this is a new segment where uh, it is added that is loss of attachment so there is no criteria is here uh, there should be loss of attachment there is should be recession or there should be visibility of cej then only we can assess this or we need to have a minimum score of 4 then only we can go for a CEJ assessment or loss of attachment assessment. Either the CEJ should be visible or the minimum score four should be there. So remaining all are same procedure, same index teeth, uh, same replacement. Everything is same. Only thing is instead of treatment need there is loss of attachment. So let's see the codes. Code zero that is. we are checking the loss of attachment so we will be measuring the depth between cej to the bottom of sulcus okay where in cpi codes we will be checking cej not cej from the gingival margin to bottom of sulcus here bottom of sulcus and cj so code zero is loss of attachment 0 to 3 mm that is cemento enamel junction is covered by the gingival margin and cpi score will be 0 to 3 CEJ visible or CPI score is four. Loss of attachment code one to four are used. So just what I mentioned, the CEJ is visible or if CPI score is four, the codes are used. That is one, two, three, four. Code is nothing but zero to three. There is no loss of attachment. So let's see what is code one. That is three point five to five point five mm loss of attachment. CEJ is within the black band. Okay, so the CEJ is within the black band. So we are checking the measurement between. C E J and bottom of sulcus. The C P I where it is measuring the gingival margin to bottom of sulcus. So gingival margin to bottom of sulcus it is very less, but actually there is big loss of attachment. So that is the difference here. We are measuring the loss of attachment which was not mentioned in Russell's or C P I T N. So here the black band is within the C E J. So that is code one. So loss of attachment is three point five two. 5.5 this length code 2 is 6 to 8 mm loss of attachment cj is between the top of the black band and 8.5 mm ring so this is the top of the black band and this is 8.5 mm ring so this loss of attachment is between 6 to 8 mm because this cj is coming between the upper end of this black band and this 8.5 mm ring okay so code 3 is 9 to 11 mm loss of attachment cj is between 8.5 to 11.5 mm ring so cj is coming between here this two rings though so this is between 8.5 to 11.5 so definitely the measurement will be 9 to 11 so this measurement will be 9 to 11 and code 4 is 12 mm or greater that is cj is beyond the 
11.5 mm ring so CEJ is beyond the 11.5 mm ring so quad 3 and quad 4 the mobility will be grade 2 or grade 3 so this is a uh, actual sign of periodontitis so only may remember that we are checking quad 1 2 3 4 only under these two criteria if the CEJ is visible or CPA score should be 4 then only we will be checking 1 to 4 otherwise it will be 0 so that's all about periodontal indices we have covered Russell indices CPI TN indices and CPI and loss of attachment hello everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so today we have fluorosis index so fluorosis index uh, we are not dealing all indices we are just seeing Dane's fluorosis index so let's see some uh, basic factors about fluorosis we have already studied what is fluorosis it is nothing but hypoplasia or hypomineralization of tooth enamel or dentin produced by chronic ingestion of excess amount of fluoride that is more than 2 ppm or 1 ppm while teeth are developing so it is affecting only when the mineralization of teeth is happening so we have seen all these uh, history of fluoride the colorado springs the great frederick mckay and gv black so this is how a motel enamel or fluorosis looks like the fluoridated water arrow pinpoints the discolored cracks or pitted areas so before that we need to differentiate what is fluorosis and what is non fluoride enamel opacities so how a fluoride affects a tooth and other reasons for enamel opacities while the area affected we can see the fluorosis will always be near the cusp tip or incisal edge but in other non fluoride thing it will be smooth surface and it will be centered and affects the whole crown shape of the region will be always pencil shading because it follows the incremental lines where the deposition of minerals occur this will be round and oval demarcation is like shades of imperceptibly into surrounding normal but there will be a clear demarcation between the normal and adjacent uh, from this capacities color will be paper white this will be creamy yellow and dark orange teeth affected that teeth calcify slowly molars and premolars rare on lower incisor and very rare on deciduous teeth but this can happen non fluoride opacities can happen on any tooth deciduous tooth may be involved gross hypoplasia will be will not be there enamel has glazed appearance and enamel surface will be etched rough to explore detection will be strong light line of light should be tangential strong light line of sight should be perpendicular to tooth surface okay so we have many indices we are not checking in detail we will be seeing only Dean's fluorosis index so this is a famous trendly Dean who has performed shoulder the survey and 21 city study he has put forward the Dean's classification of Dental fluorosis for assessing presence and severity of mortal enamel. So the salient features of fluorosis index is it is a seven point scale uh, and although no numbers were used it was considered to be an ordinal scale. Ordinal scale means it is kept in order. The lowest one means not affected and the highest one means very severely affected it goes in order so one two three four five six as it goes higher more severity is reported so that is ordinal scale and all those showing hypoplasia other than modeling of enamel were placed in normal category and children who had not lived in the community continuously but not obtained the domestic water from other than public supply are removed from the category so how do we uh, check uh, a patient with mouth mirror and throw good natural light with subject facing the window and each 
each individual receives a score corresponding to clinical appearance of two most affected teeth. So we put score for each tooth of that patient and we take up the two highest affected tooth. Suppose two highest affected tooth are the scores are three and four, we take the lowest score that is three. If the two highest scores are similar, four and four, we take four. If it is three and three, we take three. So out of 28 teeth, whichever tooth has got the highest that scores we will take. Not the tooth, the scores we take. If it is 1 and 0.5, the highest score, we take 0.5. If the highest two scores are 1 and 1, we take 1. So whichever two score is coming, highest we take up. So if uh, the score 3 has repeated more than twice, we definitely take 3. So the highest two scores are taken and if there is a doubt lower score is recorded. So this is the original criteria in 1934. The normal questionable very mild, mild, moderate, moderately severe and severe but in 42 the modified version combined moderately severe and severe. So it becomes 6 point ordinal scale. So these two uh, combined so it was before it was 7 point ordinal scale now it is six point ordinal scale now this is one this one is extensively used and WHO recommended in basic survey manual 97 that is fourth edition and scoring system is between 0 to 4 so let's see what is the scores normal 0 means the translucent semi which forms smooth glossy pale creamy color but the questionable point 0.5 is slight change that is slight aberration from translucency to occasional there will be occasional white spots very mild means small opaque paper white area scattered over 25 percentage of the tooth and it will be less than 1 to 2 mm opacity at the tip of the summit of cus this is mild at least 50 percent of the tooth will be affected this paper white area will be more extensive and three all the enamel surfaces are affected, surface may be attrition are involved and brown staining might be there. Severity 4, that is score 4 means all the enamel surfaces are affected. There will be major diagnostic sign this discrete or confluent pitting. Discrete means the borders are very demarcated. Confluent means the borders cannot be distinguished and there will be corroded like appearance that is severity number score and why it is 4 because there is 0 and there is a 0. 0.5 and rest are 1 2 3 4 5 1, 2 3 4 not 5 1 2 3 4 and 0 and 0. 0.5 so it is a 6 point ordinal scale so that's all about Dean's fluorosis index so I explained its little bit of history the classification modification so I'll come up